Um, All right, guys, we're finally up to the part of the build that I've been looking forward to the most, and that's uh, designing and fabricating some fairings for this bike. So even before it was a drag bike, when it was still going to be a circuit bike, I was always going to be making my own fairings. Difference being, as a circuit bike, I would have made them out of fiberglass. Drag bike, now I'm going to make them out of alloy. So thin alloy sheet, I'm pretty happy about working with that. I love working with thin sheet metal, shaping it, putting custom shapes in. That's the stuff that I enjoy doing the most. So... I didn't really know where to start with this and I've never done anything like this before. I have made sh custom sheet metal panels for cars and stuff like that before, but nothing like this. So sort of been working it out as I go. I'm still not 100% sure I'm going to keep using this technique for everything, but it seems to be working so far. So I've gone and bought some four millimeter mild steel rod and I've just been tack rolling that to the frame and then I've built a structure or a skeleton off that that I could then just tape some cardboard to to get an idea of what the shape's going to look like. And then that's going to make it easier, in theory, when I go to sheet it with alloy. If I've cardboard shapes are already done, then I've got sort of templates to work with to start from. So I didn't really have a plan when I started this. As I said, I've never done anything like it before, and I, there was not a lot of info I could find about it, and I figured better off just sort of getting stuck into it and just seeing if I can work it out as I go along. So you can see in the video, you'll see me making the steel frame the skeleton that goes to it as i said currently tack welded to the frame but once i've fabricated all the aluminium panels for it i'll be then making its own bolt-on mounts to the frame after that and then this steel skeleton that i've made will be cut off and discarded so that won't be there at all anymore it's only going to be the alloy plate and the brackets that are going to hold that on so we've got it to this point here it still needs a bit of work um, you're going to see in the video we'll start off with from the beginning making the skeleton for it starting with the side profile uh, then we're going to move on and i'll get jump straight into the cow section which i'm probably going to change but there's more on that later you'll see that later on and then i'll come back and explain what i'm going to be doing further from there on so uh yeah not much else to say uh like you're going to just see that i'm basically just winging it and I, even though I know that it still needs a bit more work and I'm going to be changing this a little bit, I think it's going to work doing it this way, so I'm going to carry on like this. So anyway, let's get started on the video. I'm excited. I'm gonna hit the sea and 
so as you can see, we've skipped forward quite a bit here and I've got most of this screen front cowling shaped up. Didn't film a lot of it because I didn't really know how I was gonna do it. I didn't wanna keep setting the camera up to film and then stop every time I had to cut a piece off because I'd changed my mind. So in hindsight, I probably should have just left it on time-lapse uh, and for the future for everything else, that's what I'm gonna do. But what I do have is a couple of short clips I took of this as I was making it. Uh, I'll run those now as I talk through it. So I kept it nice and narrow. It's sort of quite close to the triple clamps. Uh, there is enough room to go lock to lock on the steering. It's gonna have quite reduced steering lock anyway because it's being a drag bike. I don't want it to get into a tank slapper and get out of control. So it's not gonna have a lot of steering. So there is plenty of room between the levers and the front of the cowling. Uh, there's a lot of wire in the front of this now, which means it weighs quite a bit. So it's, as you can see, it sags down. So I need to add some vertical bracing down to the frame here, just temporary bracing uh, to hold it in place and level where I need it to stay. But aside from that, I've got the overall shape kind of what I want. So uh, it's quite sharp, quite angular. I, it's gonna lose some of that sharpness once it's sheeted with the aluminium. Uh, obviously that's gonna be sort of curved and rounded and have a bit more of an organic look to it, but I think it's still gonna be quite an aggressive looking uh, cowling. So I'm gonna carry that look on into the fairing. This is, remember this is just the skeleton. Its final shape is gonna differ a little bit from this, but for the most part, I'm happy with it. So apologies that I didn't film the whole process of designing this. Hopefully these clips that I'm running now, you can sort of get a bit of an idea of what it looks like and some of the work that went into it. But now we're gonna turn our attention back onto the sides, get some three dimensional shape in them because at the moment they're still just a flat inside uh, line. And then I'm gonna sheet it with some cardboard so we can get a better, bit of a better idea of what the final product's gonna look like. you can sort of see this silhouette of the shape that I've got to now. So it's changed quite a bit from what it started with. You can see I've cut the triangle piece off the back 
and just run it straight down, which is more like what a traditional fairing will be. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna keep it this shape. I'm gonna play around with some different shapes once I get to the cardboard uh, stage, but for the time being, for the structure, it can stay like this. Uh, for example, like these sharp edges and everything in 90s and stuff like that. Once I'm sort of drawing up the cardboard templates and then playing around with the final shape, a lot of these will end up being rounded off or radius to suit what I think looks good at the time. So it's not necessarily gonna be these straight square edges, but the overall shape of the fairing and size of it is pretty much what I want. So I've just done this left-hand side at the moment. This side was the easy side because there's no exhaust on this side. Uh, so I'm about to flip over and start on the right-hand side. Uh, it's fairly, fair bit more complicated because I've got to work around the exhaust and I want to try and make it look like the exhaust is sort of almost moulded to the fairing so it'll be nice tight clearances and it'll just protrude out from the bottom of it. Uh, one other area you might have seen in the last clip I showed of it is it's kicked out a little bit at the bottom down here. Uh, it's because I want to try and incorporate uh, some sort of, a bit of like a, a scoop in there. Not necessarily going to have any function, I just think it looks cool. Uh, it's something that I, I really like on like pro touring style car builds and I like doing that sort of style of metal work so I want to try and incorporate some of that stuff into the fairing as well as probably get some more scoops up the front end which is more what you would see on a normal sports bike. So anyway, this is the left side done for now. Uh, I'm going to jump over to the right hand side and I'll document how we're going to make it work with the exhaust. <laughs> So this is the right hand side. Um, basically, until this line here, this horizontal line, it's basically an identical copy to the left. Measurements are the same, the angles are the same. So the top half of the fairing on both sides is gonna be symmetrical. When we get down to this lower section here around the exhaust, this is where it obviously starts to change. So you can see here, I've got these curved sections here around the exhaust um, so that I can roll some aluminum around that. Um, one thing I'm not sure I'm going to do though is cover the whole exhaust. So I initially was planning to, that's why I made these rear sections here in this middle section. But as I stood back, I think it might look pretty cool if we just have the exhaust come out of the front of the fairing there and then have the exhaust exposed. So the fairing will just run along the top line of the exhaust there. The only thing I'm not sure about is I've got to make a belly pan for this next and I'm a little bit concerned that a belly pan is going to look a little bit funny if it doesn't join up to the fairing because there'll obviously be a gap there where it'll be fairing, exhaust, and then the belly pan. So that's something I'm just gonna play around with once I start fabricating that. Uh, but I've left my options open. It's gonna be easy enough to go with either option depending on what looks better. Uh, uh, yeah, essentially once the belly pan's on and I'll put some sheet on here to see what it looks like. I am limbo, waiting on a window, stuck inside an interval, new it's unattainable. Covered by a label's name, labeled by geography On a dying dark horse, placing I am a plagiarist, people picking up a pen Between a sonic precedent and the age I represent Old enough to own the storm, the noise I make Like an arrogant in rage Only not worthy For loyalty To forefathers who Own our way shaped up so it ended up being a fair bit more work than I initially thought it would be but I think it's going to look pretty good uh, it's really hard to film like to get the shape of it on camera it just doesn't show but in person I think it's going to look pretty good and I've tried to make it so that it's going to be relatively easy for me to shape in the alloy plate as well 
uh, minimal compound curves. Stuff that I can just put nice straight folds in it, um, just to make sure that it's not going to sort of take too long to make and also not going to be something that I'm not capable of making. So I've done the same with the rest of the fairing. I've kept the compound curves to a minimum. There's a few in there, but nothing that I'm not confident that I can shape. Each time I do work with sheet metal, I try and push myself to get a little bit better at it, obviously, but I also know my limits and I don't want to create something that I'm just not going to be able to shape out of the sheet. So that's another reason why it is quite flat and angular and I've just tried to work with that style to come up with something that I think looks good. So now that we've got the belly pan uh, fabbed up, it's welded to the fairing sides. It's got a bolt on, obviously, so it's going to um, be detachable. I'm going to have two fairing sides, a cowling and the belly pan, belly pan so four pieces in total. Belly pan's going to have to be uh, detachable to get the bike off the bench, into the back of the truck and so on. Um, ground clearance at the moment is roughly 70 millimetres, around three inches. When I'm sitting on it, I lose another 15 to 20 millimetres or an inch or so out of that. Still going to leave me with two inches, 50 millimetres of ground clearance, plenty for a drag strip, which is nice and smooth. So that side of it's going to be all good. I'm going to have this open in the centre of the belly pan here so air can pass through that, so it's not going to be a wind block down the bottom there. That's something I'm going to design later on with the aluminium. I might start working on that with the cardboard to see what's going to look right. But now that that's done, uh, we're ready to move on to the seat base and the rear end, like the tail section. I'm going to make a tank and I'm still going to make a front fender too. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to use a fender from the KTM RC390, which these forks are from. Uh, but I think I'll probably just make one so that it matches everything else. So really keen to carry on with this. It's been super fun to do. I actually have really enjoyed it. Um, it's just really easy to work with this small dome at a steel rod. It's easy to cut, it's easy to tack and weld. If I make a mistake, it's only a matter of like a minute or two, you cut it out and you weld another piece in. So hopefully it's gonna do its job well and it's gonna be easy to use as a, a mold to sheet as well. So now that we're ready to move on to the back, first of all, I'm gonna get some cut put onto this so we can get an idea of what it's actually gonna look like. And then, um, sort of keep me motivated and then also to help me come up with the shape for the rear of the bike and the tank. It's going to be a lot easier to come up with a design once this is covered so I can see what this actually looks like. So pretty keen to get onto it, excited to see what it's going to look like with cardboard on it because it's going to give me an indication of what the finished product is going to look like. So I'm going to stop talking, I'll get the cardboard out and some scissors and we're going to start taping some shapes to this fairing outline. Alright, so we've got the cardboard on it, um, just one layer, one half, which is enough for me to sort of get a bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, you could be looking at this right now and thinking, hey man, that looks a bit shit, and you're kind of right, because this obviously still needs a fair bit of work. So up the top here, you can see I've put some black tape up here, that's because I'm going to change this whole screen area. Um, this is too steep how it is at the moment, it's just not going to look how I want it to look, and also I've, I've found a screen that going to work with the width of this front end um, off a Yamaha R15 so I'm going to order one of them but the mounting points are completely different to what I've got up here so basically where the white ends there across that line there I'm going to cut that off and I'll redo this top screen area and I'm going to have it come across sort of over the bars a bit more and lent back a bit more not just so upright like that uh, same with the transition around into the front into the headlight area at the moment it's quite sharp and squared off now I did want it to have like an angular sort of look, uh, but it's a little bit too sharp at the moment. It looks a bit sort of half baked. So 
I'm gonna change this a little bit, just sort of round it off around there. Um, still be sh have a sort of squarish sort of shape to it, but not as sharp a transition from like the side to the front, because at the moment it, it's not quite a 90, but it's probably like a 45 and it, it just doesn't look great. Um, as far as the side goes, I'm, I'm pretty happy with like the size of it. I'm gonna leave that. Uh, the exhaust, I played around with having the exhaust covered and the exhaust exposed. Not really sure what's gonna look better with that. It did look a bit funny covered actually. I think that's just because, um, probably because of all the tape used in the paper and stuff. It's hard to get a general idea. So when I first build this fairing, I'm gonna just leave it exposed and then I'll play around with covering the exhaust end to see whether I'm gonna leave it exposed or it's gonna have a cover on it. Um, but yeah, so the front and the screen area, I'm, I'm just gonna leave that for now because I can't do anything else until I get the screen for it anyway. So I'm now I'm gonna move on to making the frame for the tank and the rear tail section and seat area. So we're gonna frame all that up now out of same thing, out of the same four millimeter mold steel rod. And I'll sheet that with card as well, just to sort of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. And then uh, we'll come back and sort of get a bit of a look at the entire side profile of the bike to see if it's going in the right direction or if I need to make any more changes than what I've already got planned. Not to walk my way Tell your children not to hear my words What they mean, what they say Mother Mother Can you keep them 